Have you ever had a flash of intuition that the life you've been living is taking its toll? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but instead of acknowledging the problem, you rationalize it away, order another espresso, and keep on working. Pretty much for all of my adult life, that's how I operated. I definitely, whether I was looking at my unsatisfying professional life or I was uh, looking at a long-term relationship that was going nowhere, it, 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 my greatest pleasure in life, my sport, was to, for hours, analyze and hypothesize all of my problems from every imaginable angle. The trouble is, when you give that much attention to your problems, they grow. And especially when you give that much attention to a mind and overthink, it's like a bomb. It explodes and a mushroom cloud of logic takes over. And it really overshadows your feelings. And as the years ticked past, well, I felt more and more disconnected from my feelings. They were way in the distance. I was leaning so heavy on my logic. So with every year that went past, I just felt disconnected, dissatisfied, isolated, and alone. But that's how the universe gets your attention, right? Yeah, the pain gets cranked up so high that hopefully you get the message and make a change, and move on. And finally, that's what I did. And the first place that I felt like I needed to start, I, I wanted more than anything, was a supportive and loving relationship. So I thought, OK, I'll begin there. <laughs> a great place. And I knew I needed to take myself out of my comfort zone. I just had to. I had to challenge myself to do the things I said I'd never do. So the first thing I did was to join an online dating site, <laughs> gasp. And then to dial up my discomfort, what I did was then not put up a photo. Because in my secret place of being, I really wanted that special someone to read my words and hear my heart. The next step that I took was to create a list of the qualities that I wanted in a husband. So there I was, sitting down, trying to make that list. And I realized I was logically frozen. So I had to look up the meaning of emotions and feelings and reconnect myself and jumpstart that list so I could get it going. But I finally got it done. And I moved on to the next thing, which was creating a mantra so I could get out of my overthink especially when it came to relationships. And I had just taken this leap of faith to nothing. There I was. And so I created this mantra that I would say to myself in the car, or to my friends, or to really anyone that would listen. <laughs> and it was this. If I meet him when I'm 90 or never, I'll be OK. <sighs> so there I was. Now, I believe the words that I was saying. I did. But at first, when I started to re reveal my true self and expose me, I was completely freaked out. And it was uncomfortable. I felt like I was walking around the city in my underwear. <laughs> it was awful. So but the, a, a magical thing began to occur. The more I said the words, the more I could actually feel them. I could feel the meaning beneath them. And this was amazing. Because what I realized by taking on this process was that overthinking only happens in the past or in the future. But feeling, why that only happens in the here and now. So here I was ready to begin to step out from behind the intellect I'd been holding on to for so long and get ready to embrace my feelings that I'd been neglecting. And you know what happened? 
within three months of making those small little changes in my life, I met my husband <laughs> on the same website that I'd signed up for three months before. And guess what? That list I created, he possessed all the qualities and more. Six months later, we were married. That's me saying, I do, I did, I'm done. <laughs> And so it was an amazing time, and I was astonished that everything happened so fast. I mean, yeah, it was astonishing that I got married in six months, but what was more astonishing was the fluidity of it all, how it just moved so effortlessly, and it felt like it was meant to be. Well, not long after we were married, I began to, to feel really run down, and I just really felt like the life I'd been living, that high-stress, caffeinated, go, go, go life, had finally caught up with me. You know, and I believe that I was in a safe and supported and loved place, and that's probably why I just unraveled <laughs> so quickly. And along the way, I got really sick. I had my appendix removed, and I found out that I had cancer. My poor little mind, body, and spirit was exhausted. Well, in that time, a friend recommended that I go see a kinesiologist. In, in kinesiology, they really deal with the whole person, right? Not just the parts. <laughs> so I was intrigued, and I made an appointment, met the doctor, and had an assessment. And when he was done, he said, wow, yeah, your immune system is not doing well. And, by the way, you're the most emotionally blocked person I've ever met. Okay, the indignant part of me <laughs> wanted to totally dismiss his diagnosis, right? I had just gotten married. I was learning to open my feelings, right? But then that little intuitive voice, she spoke up and she said, hello, you made this doctor's appointment. Why don't you give it a try? So, I did. And I began to ask the question, what would, what is, what would it be like? I mean, what is it that my feelings and my whole being, how do they dance together? Well, I found out that there are three main stressors in life. And this is basically a representation of our hormonal system. If we're off in any one of these three areas, we're in bad shape. The first is the physical, and that's heavy lifting at work, or excessive exercise, or even TMJ, which is something I suffer from, which is the clenching of the jaw. They can all wreak havoc on your hormonal system. The next is the mental, and clearly I was having some issues there, tension, anxiety, and even depression. The chemical, which, you know, I guess the usual culprits, right? Don't smoke, no drugs, keep your alcohol intake to a minimum. But what really jumped out at me on that list was two staples of the American diet. The first is sugar, and the second, carbohydrates. They can wreak havoc on your system. And unfortunately, when your hormonal balance is out of whack, your autoimmune system also is compromised and you're more susceptible to things like dementia, heart disease, and cancer, to name a few. So here I was, my husband and I talked about this, and we decided to totally revamp our nutritional plan. And within a week, we, first of all, we cut out sugar, and we reduced our carbs by 80%. This was huge. I cried a little at first. <laughs> but before I know it, within a week, the results were miraculous. My energy just totally soared. The clarity of mind that I had, I don't know if I've ever had it. And my confidence came back to me. My hormones were righting themselves. I was giving my time, my body time to heal itself. And then I went to my doctor. She ran some lab, lab tests, and I was on two medications, and she cut both of those in more than half. 
And this was a huge testimonial. By the end of the year, I'll be off them totally. So here I was. And I realized, yeah, it is a whole body. Because if I'm not taking care of me, how do I connect with myself and then expect to connect with the world? It's a big responsibility being alive. So, you know, as I look at my life, you know, the way I behaved really just didn't drop down from the sky. It was a lesson that I learned throughout my life from my mom and dad, both very amazing people, hard workers, loving, caring. They, too, had the generations before them on their shoulders. This is passed down until we awaken. And being emotionally blocked, I got especially from my dad. He was a very hard worker, driven, built his own company, successful. And my childhood memories of him and, and I together and as a family are very, very fond. I knew that he loved his family a lot. The trouble was, he was never able to utter the words, not to me, to my brother, or my mom. And they'd been married for 60 years. He paid a very high price for his high-driven, high-stress life. And that was a few years ago he was diagnosed with dementia. And today he's in the very late stages and in 24-hour care. My mom still visits him on a regular basis. And the other day she shared with me a story that she went to go see him, went into his room and sat down. And he opened his eyes and he looked at her and he said, Betty, I love you. She told me the story and I said, oh, mom, what did you say back? And her voice cracked and she said, I love you too. True expression is still possible even after 60 years. But what I learned from that most of all is that love and feeling, it doesn't happen in our rational brain. Logic can often get in the way. So as I look back on my short journey about feeling more and thinking less, wow, I'm so grateful for the opportunity and to know it's a lifelong process. And I keep making progress. As a matter of fact, I'm just now in the process of coming out, shall we say. <laughs> Since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a writer. And I just never had the courage to embrace that. So a couple of years ago, I started speech writing for others. And every time I put words on the page, those words represented a little bit of my heart and soul. So today, I am having a milestone of my own, right? I've given the gift to myself of a speech writing. And my milestone in this moment is that I'm finding my journey back to me. So I want to let you know that if this emotionally blocked woman <laughs> can make a change, find the courage to start to expose her true self, then anyone can. The key is just having faith and taking the first step. So when I think about, when I consider the space between, for me, it's a bridge that spans in between thinking and feeling. That bridge is our open heart. And boy, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so my wish from my open heart to yours is that from this moment on, you give yourself permission to just be. And know that the real gift is 
that others will love you even more for having the courage to do so.